So let's discuss Bootstrap uh, button groups and button toolbar. So here we have a list of controls. The top ones here have Angular hooked into them. The bottom one doesn't. And we'll show you kind of the features and functionalities you can use with Angular to make this look a little bit better. But right now, let's go over how this uh, HTML structure looks and how it's put together. So as you can see at the top right here, we have the with Angular header right up here. Um, this first button group, just to kind of talk about it, we denote it with the button group uh, tag. And note that this is just a span tag, so it's not going to go across the whole width. Uh, it's uh, one of the reasons we added a div here. So if I took this off, saved it, this would jump right back up to here, as you see. So you're going to want to space these. If you need uh, another line, just, just so you know. Button groups have a role, and we have our label here. This is for assisted technology. Right now we just have a list of buttons, and we'll talk about this Angular stuff uh, in a little bit, but we have some backend uh, methods, and we have uh, Boolean variables here to toggle the different uh, look of the button. So I have both of these hooked up to the same function, so if I click left, middle, and right, they'll all work together, and I can click off of it if I want to. Uh, the next one we have is a button toolbar. Give it a little margin so there's some spacing. Doing a similar thing, but we're hooking it Angular a little bit differently. We'll show that. Uh, we're doing it by string just to show you guys the differences. And we have a roll-up toolbar right here, which does actually span the whole width. And then a label here for vertical uh, or for uh, uh, assisted technologies. Um, so we'll just show you that. We have a different look and feel here. We're using a different color button, primary and secondary, toggle between them if these are equal, uh, true or false. Um, just uh, scrolling on, we'll go through these real quick. We have a checkbox, and so all these, just like the checkbox before, are bound to different Boolean variables. We have this checkbox 3 set by default, so we can click 1, 2, 2 off, we can take 3 off can do that and whenever we reload we'll see that checkbox three is turned back on radio button only lets you set one and just just like we're doing uh, radio buttons before we have a value set and we just set it all to the same property it's a string property in this case with different values and when those values match the backing you'll get you'll get the the button colored so there can only be one in this group and we can denote the group by the name right here uh, once again, we just aim, use, use the same button group uh, label here with the group role and the area label for assisted technology. And just recapping, this is only uh, a spanner tag. It doesn't uh, stretch across the whole screen, so you're going to want to make sure you have some sort of spacing. I put a div here to make this go to the next line. And we'll talk about this one without Angular just to kind of show you what's going on. As you see, there's an active button here. And that's why the left is set. And if we click on one, this will become active, but we don't get any change with these. We actually have to change the class. Now we can hook this up to Angular and toggle this to active or an empty string. And it would cycle back and forth, but it doesn't really give us a lot of a lot of visible visible cues. It's not that obvious. Um, and if we click off in this case, it becomes unactive. So there and unactive. So let's discuss real quickly what's going on behind the scenes. We'll kind of show you a couple different ways of toggling these things. Um, the, uh, both of these use strings as a pass in in order to make this easier. Uh, that the top grouping of values here just use a Boolean val value, true or false, uh, is left, is middle, is right. Same thing down here. And if it's true, we do warning. As you can see, it's turned on. That one's turned on. And we want to toggle the other ones off uh, also. And we want to all do it in one place because kind of have that one code base to rule them all rule that we discussed uh, at the very, very beginning and a few times throughout. Uh, so we want one place that we can make this toggle. Like if, if we had to set all these if else up in the click element, we could. We could do is left is true. Or actually, we're going to toggle is left uh, to be not is left and is middle to be false and is right to be false. We could do that here, but whenever we have to make changes, we have to make it on each button. And if we had a lot of buttons like we have here, that would get uh, very, very messy and very time consuming. So we want to go to one, one place to do all this. And so we have this toggle method. We have a toggle toolbar method right here. And we'll kind of show you how this works.
down in the backing. So we have is left, is middle, is right, and we have this toggle uh, toolbar. So we're basically passing in a string, and let's go back. I don't think I denoted this. If you have a single quote in here, that'll make it this a string. If I took this out, it would assume it's a property, which wouldn't be good. It would just, it would look for something on the back end here called left. It wouldn't find it, and we get an error. Fortunately, now you get it in comp compilation time as opposed to when you're running, but you'd still get an error. So uh, we have toggle string. We also have to put this in a double quotes. I could put this in a single quotes, but it's not going to like it because a single quote and a single quote, it doesn't doesn't view that as correct. Yeah, so it's going to have problems here. You're going to see the little error at, with the red. We're going to go ahead and get rid of this so it will work. Um, but yeah, so if you ever do single quotes, uh, you need double quotes on the outside. I recommend you do double quotes all the time. Um, you could do clash. You could do single quotes here if you wanted to, but then you couldn't do single quotes inside. So it could just be button, button primary. With single quotes, you'd be okay. But once you start doing toggles like this with, with uh, string literals in these string interpolations, you need to make sure you have a double quotes on the outside. So just a quick rant there. So back on the button group, we pass in a string, so left, right, or middle, kept these simple. We match the type name here to a word. And if it's true, or, or if it's not true, we're going to turn it off. So if, if this was an empty string, all these would be turned off. But if it is true, we just want to invert whatever it is. So I have an is left, is right, when there's a right, uh, when right is true, or is middle, it inverts when middle is true. So I could do equal middle, Put move this up here and this down here if I wanted to, depending on how you want to write your if statements, it would do the same thing. So that's one way to toggle all these booleans. Uh, another way we can do it, and I wanted to show you, is in the toolbar, and I especially recommend this way. This is this is usually the the easier way if you have tons of buttons. Though if you do change the string names, you'll have to change them a bunch of places here. So. That would be kind of the drawback. So it is kind of a trade-off between the two. But in this particular case, uh, this seemed a lot better to just run through, have a string called toolbar, toolbar type defaulted to nothing. And then if it's equal to that name, uh, basically means it's already set, go ahead and turn this to an empty string. So if I click on this, it'll be first, click it again, it'll be null. Or I can just uh, assign this to the type. And then instead of binding to a Boolean, we do an equality check with a string literal of the type. And each one of these, so I, I just copy and pasted these all throughout and then changed each of these names to be the same name as what was right here. So you, you do have to do a little bit more work between the two, but there's some, there's some trade-offs back and forth. So I'd you know, figure out which uh, method you like to use, but just kind of make sure you have one place where you're really controlling everything in order to make this work uh, appropriately. So we just go through to a quality checks on all of these and we do uh, true, it's gonna be secondary and false, it's gonna be primary. So this is another way you can do it and there you go. Um, so coming back to the Angular check, once again, this is the same thing, check one, two or three. So I defaulted number three to be the first one here. And as you can see, this one defaults to checkbox three. You can check all these uh, different for the radio button since you're in a radio group here and you have set the values. Actually, we don't have to do the name in this case. We can just set the values to be different values. Whenever these values match up with this uh, string value here, then they'll be set true and there can only be one at a time set to that name since they're all different names. And I defaulted it to radio two. So that would be how you'd set the radio buttons. So I hope uh, at the end of this, you can kind of see how you can work with Angular to make some additional stylized content on, uh, on your buttons to make them look a little nicer, a little prettier, more active, and to store values for later use to be used within your control set, however you see fit.